Good evening guys, this is Dr. Paul. Once again, thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. Today I want to talk about uh, gonorrhea in pregnancy. This is a, a very common problem because many people nowadays are getting gonorrhea and that too this infection is increasing among uh, pregnant women. So that's why I want to answer this problem today. Before I go further, I also invite you to visit our website at uh, www.usmlevideos.net That is www.usmlevideos.net So let us talk about uh, gonorrhea in pregnancy. You see, gonorrhea and chlamydia, they constitute the most common causative organisms of sexually transmitted disease. That's why we are nowadays testing almost every woman for gonorrhea and chlamydia. And almost half of these gonorrheal infections are asymptomatic. And in a pregnancy, if they get gonorrhea, they might cause uh, preterm labor, ophthalmia neonatorum. And in a, a newborn baby, they can cause neonatal sepsis with uh, serious consequences. That's why studying gonorrhea in pregnancy is very important. The prevalence of gonorrhea in pregnancy is like uh, up to 10%. Up to 10% of pregnant women can get gonorrhea. And most of them can be having an asymptomatic gonorrheal infection. In the first trimester, it can present as a pelvic inflammatory disease. So these, uh, the chorion fuses with the decidua and it obliterates the uterine cavity. But in the late pregnancy, Neisseria gonorrhea, it can cause premature rupture of membranes. It can cause uh, preterm labor. It can cause chorioamnionitis or postpartum infection and the newborn baby can get ophthalmia neonatorum, the most common manifestation of perinatal infection. So Neisseria gonorrhea in third trimester can give ophthalmia neonatorum to the child and some of these babies they can get corneal uh, perforations and panophthalmitis and the neonatal infections can actually cause uh, disseminated sepsis with arthritis and uh, uh, rectal infection and genital infection. So pregnant women uh, should always be identified whether they have GC or chlamydia. That's why nowadays in the first trimester itself we test almost every woman for GC and chlamydia. Now, pelvic examination may reveal mucoprolent uh, cervicitis and uh, that is seen even in a chlamydial infection and the patient can have rectal findings, urethral findings. So, you should also examine these patients for any skin problems and pharyngeal problems and rectal problems because sexually transmitted diseases, uh, they, they go together like uh, syphilis and gonorrhea, chlamydia, AIDS and HIV, all these things. So the dissemination happens. The dissemination can cause uh, even joint pains in a pregnant woman. You see in a non-pregnant woman, for example, the uh, after menstruation, that the hematogenesis spread of gonorrhea happens and the patients get like uh, uh, joint pains gonococcal arthritis that can be seen even in pregnant women. Pregnant women infected with gonorrhea should be treated uh, uh, recommended. Uh, the most commonly used medication is cephalosporin. You should not treat these women with quinolones or tetracyclines. Why? These medications are not recommended for use during pregnancy. So the treatment for gonorrhea during pregnancy is cephalosporin. Remember that. Cephalosporin. If they are allergic to cephalosporin, you give an intramuscular dose of spectinomycin. Okay. Remember that point very, very well. The gonorrhea in pregnancy is treated with a cephalosporin or spectinomycin. You should not use quinolones. You should not use tetracyclines because they are contraindicated during pregnancy. But if you treat them, they might reduce the risk of uh, uh, passing on that uh, 
uh, infection to their babies. So that is the most important topics about uh, gonorrhea during pregnancy. The things you need to remember are the risk factors, that is uh, unprotected sex, then the uh, consequences of the infection, as I said, like uh, premature labor, premature rupture of membranes, and uh, chorioamnionitis, and uh, uh, ophthalmia neonatorum, neonatal sepsis, those are all the consequences. And uh, diagnosis, cervical cultures. And treatment, cephalosporins or spectinomycin. You should not use quinolones and tetracyclines. That's about gonorrhea in pregnancy. Please post your comments if you have any uh, importance so that others can learn from them. And uh, for those of you who are preparing for clinical skills examination, I recommend the uh, US Family Smasher. This book is available on Amazon and Barnes Noble. This book has excellent tips and mnemonics on the doctor-patient communication and 70 most common cases that you would see in US Family clinical skills examination. You don't have to waste thousands and thousands of dollars and I recommend you to read just this one book and you will pass your examination. So that's my one advice for you if you are taking USMLE clinical skills examination. Don't waste your money, just get one this book, USMLE Smasher, an ex libris, Amazon, or uh, uh, Barnes and Noble, and such uh, success will be yours. And you can also visit us at uh, www.usmlevideos.net. We have posted videos for uh so many so many topics and you can spend hundreds of hours listening to our videos and you can view them freely and uh, as many times as you want and uh, i wish you all the best and uh, merry christmas to every one of you thank you